want to talk publicly, I always want to have those available. Right. I'm doing it now because I'm still having the... Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm having the... Uh, uh, uh. I've been having that today. I don't think it's going... I may have to go to a doctor and get a full checkup. Because I just got over bronchitis. Yeah. But I'm still having the... Uh, uh, uh. What do you think that is, Levy? I don't have any, any... Oh, I thought you were a medical professional now. <laughs> uh, all right. Yes, yeah, so they asked me, am I still paying my credit card bills? Yes. No good credit. Okay. So. All right, you want me to go to my next thing? Yes. All right. Do I have some more Torah, and then we'll get to some other stuff? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Well, let's get to some of your nonsense after. We got a full room in the in the in there today. We have three trolls and and six actual people who were good. Well, I, I put it on my Facebook. What's that? I put the show on my Facebook for ten minutes before the show. So, well, that's where they come from. Oh, is that where they all came from? Yeah. Well, okay. Some of them. Some of them. All right. The next one is. This is some good Torah, lady. Try to pay attention so I can make a nice. Okay. Highlight. Don't be Tebowing during this. You don't, but wouldn't that show respect? No. Okay. Okay. The next thing is, I got a question from one of our one of our most loyal viewers, my nephew Yaakov. Hey, Yaakov, how's it going? And he asked a question, which I thought was great, and I thought this could be a nice segment. Mm -hmm. He asked, how is it that single Jewish women don't cover their hair? Why don't they cover their hair? Yeah, or their legs. While divorced and married, no, divorced and widowed women do cover their hair, yet they're not married anymore. Okay. So Torah, right? Why is it that the single women don't mm -hmm. have to cover their hair? So I thought I would discuss that. Okay. I think it's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, first thing I want to do is get some background. Yeah. What's the thing with the hair covering, right? What's the thing with the hair covering? According, uh, do you know why women cover their hair, period? Why do Jewish women cover their hair? So, so that only their husband gets to see the, their glory. That's right, because the most beautiful part of a woman is her hair. So that's the ultimate nakedness. What about a bush? Where is that? You're ruining the segment. Sorry. <laughs> so, some people like a hairy one, and some people like it clean shaven. Uh-huh. So, so the, she saves her hair for the, to only for her husband to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, we understand that. Mm -hmm. We learn it out that it comes from the Torah tells us this. Where do we learn it from? Do you know? No. We learn it from the laws of Sota. There's a Pesach in Sota. Oh, yeah, they, they shall uncover her hair. They uncover her hair when they suspect her of cheating on her yeah. husband. Yeah. So we know that a married woman has her hair normally covered. Yeah. So we know that. That's a fact. Yeah. Right? The question is... How do we interpret that Pusik? Mm -hmm. The Rambam says this is a proof that all Jewish women must cover their hair. And it doesn't matter if they're single, married, divorced, widowed, whatever. It doesn't matter. All Jewish women cover their hair. If you are a follower of the Rambam, and I know that, I'm going to say a name here. We have a viewer named Michal. Mm -hmm. And she says, like, you know, like they're Sephard and they follow the Rambam. Mm -hmm. She said that's, that's like their tradition, is their Masora is from the Rambam. So I would imagine, according to her tradition, yeah. that even single women well, must cover their hair according to the Torah. There's, there's, there's no question about it. The Rambam doesn't differentiate. Al pi Torah, they must cover their hair. So I want to know if that's what... Michal, if you're watching, I would like to know if that's what your... I've never seen any, I've never seen any single Jewish women covering their hair. Okay. But have you been to all the Sephardi countries? Pretty much. <laughs> you've, been, you've been to like Yemen and you've been to like yeah, Iraq, you've been to like Portugal, Iran, Portugal and the Azores. Yeah, the Azores. You've been to like yeah. Tunisia. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I've been to Bali. Yeah. I got a nice massage on the <laughs> Okay. So I would like to know if that was the minhog of these followers. Cause it, and if not, why not? Okay. So that's one thing. But not everybody follows the Rama. Most opinions say... Not like that at all. Most opinions say, from that Pasuk we learn, that the Torah is telling you that married women cover their hair. Because the Pasuk is talking about, the verse is talking about um, 
Sota, which is suspecting a wife, so that's teaching us that wives cover their hair, but we don't learn that about single women. So if you're not married, you don't have to cover your hair. So therefore, if you're married, if you're not divorced, if you're not, if you're divorced, or if you're single, or if you're, um, what's the other one? Widowed. Widow. According to Torah, you would not cover your hair. However, as is brought down in Shulchan Aruch, in the base Shmuel, explains that mid the rabbis made it, were Megoyzer, and they ruled, they poskined that um, widowed and divorced women must cover their hair mid So halachically today, all women who've ever been married, doesn't matter if they get divorced or if the husband dies, they still must cover their hair at all times. Right? Yeah. Even though there's no husband who can see the hair, doesn't matter, they must cover their hair all the time. That's the halacha. Okay? But we don't say that by singles. Single Jewish women, there's the rabbanan never said, oh, but they have to do it mid mm -hmm. We never said that by them. Mm -hmm. So my nephew wanted to know, why is it that, you know, even though the, you know, the rambam we understand because he says it applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. But we don't hold by the rambam, right? Yeah. So why is it that, you know, according to the second opinion, that's not the rambam's, why is it that the Beis Shmuel says they made a, they were Magoyzer only on, they made a Gezerah only on divorced women, but not on single women? And I'm going to answer that question right now. Okay. Is this interesting to you? Yeah. Okay, good. There's actually three different answers that I found. Okay. The first answer is that we're looking at this thing backwards. There's a difference, there's a significant difference between a woman who's been married before and a woman who's never been married. They're not the same. They're technically both single, but they're not the same kind of woman. Mm -hmm. A single Jewish woman is a virgin. Not many of the ones I know. According to Torah, they're all virgins. We had this discussion before. Yeah. Okay, let's go through this. Why are they virgins? Because for them not to be virgins, we need two witnesses to come in and say they saw eyewitness that they're not. Right. And Levy's going to go, well, I've seen... <laughs> I had some witnesses. <laughs> I put it on video. I posted it online. <laughs> Have you been to Basin with it? No. Nah. Okay, so in, until that time, everybody, every Jewish woman has a chazaka that that they're a, um, they're a virgin, okay? The Russian, the language that's used in, in Shulchan Aruch, there's, is a penuya. A penuya doesn't, has to cover her hair, mm -hmm. okay? That's, that's, that's the divorce one. Well, once again, it looks like you're not paying attention. I'm listening. But it looks like you're not paying attention. Lauren Kaplan, hey, how's it going, buddy? Boy, this is the most crowded it's ever been, huh? How's it going? Lauren Kaplan, in front of mine. Great. Okay. Welcome to the thing. Now, are, are you paying attention? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a woman who's been married before, she's not a virgin anymore. She's different. She's experienced. She's had sex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can you imagine having sex, lady? I've thought about it once or twice. Okay, so there's a difference between a virgin and a woman who's had a lot of sex. Mm -hmm. They're different women. So the idea, and, and, and she's called a penuya. Somebody who's ever had sex is called a penuya. A, a woman who's never had sex, a single woman, is called a basula, a virgin. Right. So the penuya means they're available, but they're not virgins. So the idea of covering the hair means I am no longer a virgin. That's the message. It's a sign I've had sex. I should cover my hair. <laughs> <laughs> For a woman, it means, it doesn't just mean, it, besides meaning that I'm married and I have a husband who's the one who's looking at my hair, it's also a sign that says, I've had sex. Now, why is that sign so important? Yeah, why is the sign so important? Because the virgin has the right to look different than everybody else because her message is, I've never had sex. Goodbye. If you marry me, you'll be the first guy. You will deflower me. Yeah. You can have the whole enchilada. Right? Yeah. A divorced or widowed woman can't make that offer to you. All they can say is, well, you're the number two guy I'm going to marry. 
right? Yeah. You're number two, right? But the the virgin, you're like, you'll be my first guy and probably my only guy, right. right? So that's why she still gets to have her hair uncovered. A woman who's been married before, she can't uncover her hair. Like, she can't do that because she's being deceptive. She's saying, oh, I'm a virgin, but you're not a virgin. You've had, you've been with a man before. You've been married before. You can't run around doing that. In fact, that leads to the second thing. A virgin is available for everybody. Mm -hmm. A woman who's been divorced is not available to everybody. Who is she not available to? Everyone but her husband. Who? Oh, everyone. Until she gets married. Oh, oh, Cohen. A Cohen cannot marry... Right, a divorcee. A divorcee. Right? Yeah. So... Just like a married woman puts covers her hair and she's announcing to the world, I'm not available. Mm -hmm. A woman who's been divorced covers her hair and says, I'm not available to every man. I'm only available to you if you've got the right tribe. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, if you're a Cohen, I can't marry you. Mm -hmm. Got it? So we see that there's differences between a virgin yeah. and a divorced woman. Yeah. Is that your cologne? Um, no, it's to, like, open up my chakras. Oh, okay. And lastly... I love life. Life loves me. A <laughs> woman who gets married covers her hair. Mm-hmm. Right? Now you're asking her, because she's trying to be more modest, right? And you're asking her to remove her hair afterwards? Or remove her, um, her hair covering afterwards? That doesn't make sense. When we do something like increase in service to God by trying to become more modest. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say Lake Levy was going to take upon himself to be more modest. Wow. Well, he was going to spend less time talking about sex. sex and talking about sex, right? And then we said, Levy, you're done with that point in your life. Yeah. Would you want it, Do you think Tor would be happy if you went back to that? No. Right? Right. Let's say, like, you grew a beard, mm -hmm. right? And, and you decided you wanted to shave your beard off. Mm -hmm. Do you think Tor would like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is we don't decrease when it comes to servitude, to God. Once you reach a certain level, you don't give up that level and go down. So once a woman's been wearing a, a head covering for three days in a row, it's like a chazaka now. 